Making our cities accessible, no matter what disability you have, is a challenge. But important, everyone should be able to visit work, schools, or go to a museum, even with mobility constraints. To stimulate cities to not only comply with European standards, but also to learn from each other and to award the frontrunners, the European Commission grants an award to cities that really stand out in accessibility. At this location, the Eurovision 2020 was supposed to be held, and it was supposed to be a very accessible event. But then the pandemic struck, and instead of a venue for a big party and a celebration of inclusion, it became an emergency hospital. In this pandemic, public life has come to a standstill. However, the need for inclusion did not. Government information, health facilities, and what is left of the fun things, everybody has a right to be included. More than ever, this prize is important. Let's find out who the winner is of the Access City Award 2021. Yeah, let's put on our masks, keep our distance, and let's go inside. After you. So, Nick, you do a lot with the accessibility of cities. What do you do? Well, since my spine injury in 2010, I raise awareness for people with disability in the Netherlands and the abroad. So, if you're blind or if you're deaf or in a wheelchair like me, I help uh, companies uh, or cities to adapt uh, for people with disabilities. When I walk around the city, I see uh, public transport is, is, is accessible, uh, streets are accessible. We're pretty far, or is there still a lot of obstacles you, you can't get over? It's always kind of a difficult question, because when I put you in a wheelchair, you will see that the world isn't that accessible as we think we are. And then uh, this spring, the pandemic hit. How has it affected people with disabilities? What, what, I, uh, what I read a lot as well is that public transport has be, become more difficult. For example, if you're in a wheelchair, somebody has to push you into a train, which is kind of one and a half, two meter distance, a difficult thing. Uh, for people that are deaf, it's difficult to talk to people when you can't see the mouth at the moment, yeah. uh, uh, which we have an yeah, example Yeah, we have these masks, they make yeah. it easier for people where they, who, who, can't, who have to read lips or who have difficulties recognizing emotions, they can also see better. Yeah, which is a brilliant, brilliant example, actually. And the second thing is the digital accessibilities as well. So imagine if, you're, if you can't see everything or you're blind, and nowadays you work at home, so you're behind the internet the whole day. So accessible accessibility in websites, shops, or municipalities is a big thing as well. Let's get started. Uh, different people involved in this prize will announce the three winners, and we will hear their reactions. We also have two special mentions. One for a city that sees accessibility not only uh, as means for inclusion of people with disability, but as an opportunity to make the city better for everybody. And as a special mention for a city that did outstanding work in making the physical city accessible. And a special one-time only award for a city with an outstanding crisis management response and digitalization to make sure information and facilities for COVID are accessible to everyone. The special mention for accessibility of public services in time of the pandemic. And if you watch this video on social media, subtitles and international sign translation are included. And if you watch this on the conference platform Kudo, we also have translation to French, Italian, German, Spanish and Polish, as well as audio description. For the last 10 years, the EU has recognized cities that are doing their best to offer equal access to city life for persons with disabilities and older people. Its success and the growing interest around the Access City Award over the past few years has led us now to the 11th edition of the award. Over 11 years, there have been 425 applicants and 68 rewarded cities. This year, 50 applications were received for the Access City Awards 2021 and as announced by Commissioner for Equality, Helena Daly, six prizes will be awarded one overall winner, two runners-up, and three winners in special mention categories. A novelty for this very special year is that there is one special mention category on accessibility in times of pandemic. This year, the six shortlisted cities in alphabetical order are Bremerhaven, Germany, Firenze, Italy, Gdynia, Poland, Jönköping, Sweden, Komatini, Greece, and Poznan, Poland. 
The six winners of the Access City Award 2021 will join their predecessors in becoming symbols of commitment, innovation and progress towards creating genuinely accessible cities and serve as an inspiration to others across the EU and beyond. Good luck to all. The Access City Rewards recognizes and celebrates as a city willingness, ability and efforts to become more accessible in order to guarantee equal access to fundamental rights, improve the quality of life of its population and ensure that everyone, regardless of age, um, mobility or ability, has the equal access to the resources and pleasures cities have to offer. Every European city that believes that they should win this award could nominate themselves. 50 did so. National juries looked at their applications and 21 were selected and sent to the European jury. And they then selected six finalists and choose the winners from those six. And the winning city will get an astonishing 150,000 euro. Last year, the winner of the 10th award was Warsaw. What did they do in the last 10 years to earn that award? Our reporter went to see, but not here. Welcome to the Accessible City of Warsaw. We've worked hard over the last 10 years to adopt inclusive approaches and integrate our communities. We recently won the Access City Award 2020 for commitment to promoting accessibility for all. Today, we're going to speak to the city's residents to see how they've benefited from the changes. In 2017, the city legislated to ensure new infrastructure complies with accessibility standards. Have you noticed the changes? Warsaw has come a long way to eliminate architectural barriers. Facilities such as driveways and lifts have been introduced to help people with disabilities in their daily lives. Our transportation system has undergone changes, upgrading bus stops and implementing accessible vehicles and rolling stocks. Is it easier for you to access the whole city now? Yes, it is getting better. Many trams and buses are equipped with the system to read aloud the names of the stops. Many curbs at pedestrian crossings have been lowered and equipped with attention points. Some pedestrian crossings now play sounds. Now it is much easier for us to move around and it is safer. At present, I am pleased that all these buses and trams are being adapted for persons with disabilities, especially people with mobility impairments. Perhaps the most important thing for me is that the vehicle should have a low floor. Then I feel safe and I can manage on my own. I can use all the buses and it didn't used to be that way. The Warsaw Metro is also very admirably adapted for people in wheelchairs. Have the changes affected your ability to travel away from Warsaw? When it comes to traveling out of town, the train stations are really important. They are more and more accessible. At all the main train stations in Warsaw, there are tactile markings on the floor, there are guiding paths, there are points of attention. At some stations, there are also tactile maps, so it is easier to find yourself at them. How is the city ensuring it's inclusive? I see that museums in the city of Warsaw are aware of the needs of the deaf. For example, lectures, guided tours, discussions about exhibits. When the deaf want an interpreter, an interpreter is available. 
There are also deaf guides who guide the museums themselves. Thanks to this, the participants learn more and more information. For me, this is a good, positive future. Removing barriers in culture is also a story about Warsaw. This can be felt most strongly during the Culture Without Barriers Festival. Warsaw has been funding it continuously for eight years. Film festivals, theatrical speculations, exhibitions and museums, and galleries, or even walks around the city are always held. All this is for people with disabilities, those who cannot see, those who cannot hear, those in wheelchairs or on the spectrum of autism. This is our celebration of accessible culture. Have you used the city's websites to get information? Communication and navigation have become easier with the Warsaw website and mobile applications. The city's accessible website makes it easier for us to find important information. You work for the city, don't you? I have been working in the museum for two years as an accessibility coordinator. I think it's very important for this position and what we do in the museum that I am a person with a disability. Through our activities, we meet the specific needs of different people with different disabilities. We have, for example, programs such as the Morning Birds program for people with autism, where only these people have access to the museum and their sensory stimuli are limited. Or, for example, the Sensory Friendly Concert event, where children can access the mute room or the muting headphones. This enables them to stay at the concert for as long as possible. For people with intellectual and development disabilities, we organise family and educational events for special schools. Blind people can benefit from typograph and audio description. Deaf people can use sign language translation. The opinion of those interested is also very important to us. We listen to what they say and try to prepare subsequent events as well as possible. Za każdym razem wsłuchujemy się uważnie w to, o czym mówią i staramy się kolejne wydarzenia przygotowywać jak najlepiej. Warsaw is a city that takes accessibility for all seriously. It still has work to do, but for now its efforts are being rightly recognised and rewarded, and its citizens and visitors are enjoying city life to the fullest. We will continue to work hard to break down barriers. talk about accessibility, we think the Nordic countries or the Western European ones, but we see uh, the Central European countries are doing remarkably well. Is accessibility now a thing throughout Europe? Yeah, absolutely. And it's amazing to see that they're optimizing their accessibility so good. Well, that's good to hear. Well, here to react is the mayor of Warsaw. Jestem bardzo dumny, że Warszawa otrzymała nagrodę Access City Award 2020. To dla nas potwierdzenie tego, że kierunek podejmowanych działań w budowaniu Warszawy dla wszystkich, a więc także dostępnej dla osób z niepełnosprawnościami, jest jak najbardziej słuszny i doceniany. W przestrzeni publicznej wprowadzamy szereg zmian, aby likwidować kolejne bariery architektoniczne. Remontujemy nawierzchnie, obniżamy krawężniki, montujemy płyty ostrzegawcze czy pasy prowadzące. Dostosowujemy też przystanki czy przejścia dla pieszych tak, aby były bardziej bezpieczne. Autobusy miejskie, metro i kolej są już w 100% dostępne, a tabor tramwajowy wymieniamy sukcesywnie na niskopodłogowy. Działamy również w obszarze dostępności kultury. Coraz więcej instytucji kultury wyposażonych jest w pętle indukcyjne dla osób słabo słyszących. Organizujemy też wydarzenia dostępne lub dedykowane nie tylko osobom niewidomym czy głuchym, ale również np. rodzicom z dziećmi ze spektrum autyzmu. Ważna jest również dostępność urzędów i miejskich usług. Intensywnie pracujemy nad tym, by obsługa naszych mieszkańców uwzględniała ich różne potrzeby. Upraszczamy język naszych dokumentów, dbamy o dostęp do tłumacza języka migowego. Sytuacja pandemii jednoznacznie pokazała, jak istotne jest zagadnienie dostępności cyfrowej naszych usług. Między innymi dlatego modernizujemy miejskie serwisy, aplikacje i narzędzia cyfrowe. 
Dodatkowo uruchomiliśmy Warszawską Akademię Dostępności, aby coraz więcej osób w stolicy nie tylko było wrażliwych na temat dostępności, ale również posiadało rzetelną wiedzę i umiejętności. To niesłychanie ważne, żeby miasta rozwijały się w duchu projektowania uniwersalnego i uwzględniały potrzeby wszystkich mieszkańców – seniorów, małych dzieci, ale również osób z niepełnosprawnościami. Bo tak jak Warszawa, wszystkie miasta powinny być dla wszystkich. Well, let's start handing out awards. We're going to start with a special mention for in these times of pandemic. Uh, we just discussed the needs of people with disabilities have drastically changed. Some are bigger, some are smaller. As a municipality, how do you know what to do? Well, the first thing to realize, I think, is that everyone has a handicap. You can just see mine a bit better. So if we want to work on an inclusive society, if we want to work on accessibility, is that to realize that in these times of a pandemic, my needs are, for example, in a stall, are a big uh, higher at the moment. For example, if somebody has autism, you need to think about keeping it distant. For somebody that is uh, deaf or blind, it's difficult to keep the distance. So in order to get an inclusive society, we need to realize that the needs of people with disabilities changed. Well, there was one city in Europe that really stood out in uh, these times. So here to announce the winner of the special mention and to give a sneak preview of the upcoming strategy and policies to be implemented in the next 10 years is the first ever Commissioner for Equality. And it's also her first award show. Here is the European Commissioner for Equality, Ms. Helena Daly. Good afternoon, Rogier and Nick. Good afternoon, everyone. I am pleased and honored to take part in the first Access City Award ceremony of this Commission's mandate. Accessibility is a prerequisite to the participation of persons with disabilities on an equal basis with others in society. More accessible cities are cities where persons with disabilities can enjoy autonomy and spontaneity. Accessible cities make getting to school, getting to work, living independently and meeting friends possible. Accessible cities are cities where services and programs can be used by all and where participation is inclusive. This is because accessibility is an enabler. Without accessibility, persons with disabilities cannot engage meaningfully in their community. Society should be accessible by default. In our daily lives, we should not be asking ourselves about the accessibility of cities, sport facilities or nature trails. We are working to achieve an EU that is fair for all without excluding anyone. Accessibility is important for all of us. The European population is growing older. Sooner or later in life, every one of us will need an accessible environment. Accessibility is a plus for everyone. I will ensure that this crucial subject remains at the forefront of our actions. Accessibility is a broad topic. It is not only about the built environment, it is also about services and products and transportation. Accessibility is essential to guarantee access to information, be it on digital platforms or through traditional means like books. And we mustn't forget the importance of assistive technologies. My services are working with member states to achieve a rapid and correct transposition of the European Accessibility Act. And I hope that we will continue to work together in the years to come for a more accessible society. I know that the future strategy on the rights of persons with disabilities, which forms part of the Union of Equality, is one of the points to be discussed at the European Day of Persons with Disabilities conference. We are preparing this new strategy based on the feedback we received during the evaluation of the current disability strategy during the consultations we organized over the last few months. The new strategy will cover the period 2021-2030 and it will be our main instrument at European level on the rights of persons with disabilities. And I wanted to bring a positive change.
Of course, it will take into account the EU's commitments under the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. It will consider relevant EU legislation and the European Pillar of Social Rights. I want the strategy to become the European reference for all persons with disabilities in Europe, but also for European and national lawmakers. Our new and enhanced strategy will contribute to the transition towards a more sustainable, innovative, digitalized and fair union. A union that ensures a decent standard of living for all. A union that leaves no one behind. This is why the strategy on the rights of persons with disabilities must be ambitious. The EU is also addressing the economic and social consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic and its recovery. These measures will also contribute to building a union of equality. EU member states and their cities are affected by the pandemic. I can only say that I am very impressed when I see the effort and strength demonstrated in this crisis. Despite the difficult context, many cities have been and remain shining examples of how to be truly accessible. Despite the current situation, 50 cities applied. This shows the determination and the interest of EU cities to keep on working on accessibility, no matter what. I thank all the applicants and congratulate you for your dedication to accessibility. A big well done to the six cities that were shortlisted. No matter your ranking, you are all winners and you will become members of the Access City Award Network. Now let's start with what you are all waiting for. It's the time to announce the winners of the Access City Award 2021. I have in this envelope the name of the winner of this year's special prize, the Prize for Accessibility of Public Services in Times of Pandemic. As you know, we have six shortlisted cities. In alphabetical order, they are Bremerhaven, Germany, Florence, Italy, Gdynia, Poland, Jonshopping, Sweden, Komotini, Greece, and Poznan, Poland. I know the jurors have been extremely impressed by all the applications, notably for this special category. However, one city really stands out. The winner of this year's special prize for accessibility of public services in times of pandemic is... Poznan. Congratulations, Poznan. It was inspiring to see that you provided daily information in sign language. I also appreciate the launch of the Telephone of Cordiality. You deserve this award as you are truly an example when it comes to accessibility for everyone in the EU. Special mention for accessibility of public services in times of pandemic, Poznan, Poland. Poznan, the fifth most populated city in Poland, has worked hard in recent years to make itself a more inclusive place for everyone. In particular, the city has shown a strong commitment to improving its public services during the course of the recent global pandemic. Poznan specifically targeted those in high-risk groups and launched several strong initiatives to support them during this difficult time. A service was set up for persons with disabilities and older people where volunteers would go shopping for food and hygiene products, as well as medicines, and deliver these safely to their doors. A telephone helpline was also set up that older people living alone could call to simply talk to a municipal volunteer. This helpline ensures those in isolation are maintaining social contact and their overall health and condition are being monitored. The city also launched a digital advice service aimed at teaching older people how to use technology. This service allowed them to keep in touch with loved ones and to use certain online services. ICT consultants explained how to send emails, download photographs, visit websites and how to install applications on their devices. Information on the pandemic was provided daily in sign language. 
thanks to these efforts and in order to highlight its incredible work during this difficult time, this year Cosnan wins a special mention for accessibility of its public services in times of pandemic. Wow, congratulations Poznan! Here to react is their mayor. Thank you for this honor. From the very beginning of the pandemic, we knew that we had to support the residents of our city. Uh, particular attention was paid to seniors and people with disabilities, that is, those classified as high-risk groups. We wanted them to be able to use public services meeting their everyday needs with all safety precautions preserved. Therefore, we launched the digital advice hotline to help seniors use new technologies. We provided advice, taught seniors how to install software, send emails or upload photos. Another aspect important for us was activation for the elderly. The isolation was extremely difficult, especially for single people. That is why we started the Mask of Senioro action, during which seniors were sewing mas face masks for their peers. Then, these face masks were distributed by volunteers free of charge. We also provided for a special helpline, the cordiality phone for seniors from Poznan to call and talk about their concerns. Our volunteers helped with shopping for seniors and for people with disabilities, buying basic products for them in order to protect them as much as possible from the necessity to go out. The service was free of charge, but beneficiaries had to pay for their purchases. All these services, originally developed by the city of Poznan, were prepared after an analysis of the local needs of seniors and people with disabilities. Most of them is still available. Well, let's move to our second special mention. This city demonstrates accessibility as a business model and an opportunity. In particular, good accessibility attracts tourism, which is important for the region and its economy. The applicant approached accessibility holistically and embraced it as an opportunity to really improve the whole city. So this award is handed out by the European Disability Forum. They speak and work for all people with disabilities in Europe. As a European umbrella organization, EDF is the link between persons with a disability and the EU institution. The EDF makes sure that disabled people are not forgotten when new laws are written for all European countries. After all, the motto of the disability movement is nothing about us without us. Here to announce a special mention, accessibility as an opportunity for the whole city is the EDF president. Dear commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, this year we celebrate the Access City Award in very unusual circumstances due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In these circumstances, millions of Europeans are experiencing limitations in their daily lives, in their human contacts, in their freedom of movement, in all aspects of their lives. But this is what we have been saying for many years. This is why we have been advocating for accessibility. These situations are the daily life of persons with disabilities. We have seen the last decade very important developments. This award, the European Accessibility Act, the very recently approved European Accessibility Standard of Built Environment. This award this year takes place in unusual situations, as you have said. The cities around the Union experience many problems in providing accessibility to their citizens to very important services, to healthcare, transport, commerce, important information in all domains. It is my pleasure and my honor to present the special mention to the city that has adopted the motto, accessibility 
as an opportunity for the whole city. The name of the city is Komotini, Greece. Congratulations, Komotini. Special mention for accessibility as an opportunity for the whole city. Komotini, Greece. Komotini's modern urban centre surrounds a medieval fortress, making accessibility a challenge. In spite of this and limited financial resources, Komotini has made significant improvements and shown great commitment to becoming accessible. To achieve this, the city devised a multi-phase development programme for accessibility and social inclusion which funded certain initiatives in the city. The urban infrastructure was improved with the inclusion of bicycle lanes, accessible open spaces and public buildings. Social initiatives such as the creation of a community and activity centre run for and by persons with disabilities as well as after-school programmes for children with intellectual disabilities were co-funded by the city and run by local civil society organisations. Thanks to this development programme, 20 kilometres of walkways in the city are now accessible. 90% of schools and 75% of public buildings have also improved their accessibility measures, with 47 out of 60 playgrounds also being accessible. Comatini has strived to cover all aspects of life, from the accessibility of sport facilities to the improvement of the local bus network, to improve the quality of life for everyone. As a result of this holistic approach, Comatini wins a special mention for its inclusive approach to improving accessibility in the city to better the lives of all. Really, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rolakastanis. It's a great honor to be awarded by you for uh, Access City Awards 2020. Uh, I'm Spiros Adandanidis. I represent uh, Komotini, its municipality, every disabled person and non-disabled uh, of Komotini, because uh, as a community, uh, we are all uh, being uh, really proud. Uh, we're all really proud for this uh, award. Uh, Komotini is one of the friendliest uh, towns uh, in Europe and in Greece uh, for disabled persons. Probably not one of the most accessible, but um, we are sure we are one of the friendliest because we fight for that uh, as a community. Side by side, other uh, organizations. Uh, I'm a member of board of uh, an association called uh, Perpato. There is also Fondizo and many, many others, but uh, also municipality, all the local authorities, um, and we all work for that uh, as a whole. It's true that uh, we actually took accessibility as an opportunity for the whole city. Because uh, Komotini is uh, a city of multiple uh, colors, cultures and uh, people who, who, know, who, who cannot accept uh, that uh, they can be discriminated. We need uh, a city which is barrier free, discrimination free and can uh, be a, a city for everybody with no exceptions and no barriers. Uh, we fought for that uh, award the last 20 years. Uh, we played uh, lots of systems, uh, lots of strategies. Uh, we competed with other uh, cities. Uh, I'd like to uh, give my gratitude to the committee, to the people of our municipality, to the people who worked for that, uh, to the people who worked for the awards and uh, sent the application and also to the other cities and uh, every other disabled person who works for uh, his or her town or their town uh, and to try to make it better. Uh, the truth is that it's not uh, only a municipality effort but it's all about the disabled people creating a world uh, for us uh, and by us. Nothing for us without us. Uh, please uh, keep trying uh, your best for your city. Congratulations again, Komotini. We're going to go to the last special mention for the build environment. Um, Nick, when we build something new, of course, we make it accessible. But what about historic buildings, museums, uh, archaeological sites? Should they also be accessible for people in a wheelchair? 
Now, I think one thing we do need to accept that we can't adapt the whole world. We can't make the whole world accessible. The most important thing is that I know what is accessible and what is not. So if we go to an historic sightseeing, for example, we just can't make it accessible. But if I know it beforehand, it's not a problem because I can choose to take another path. But and one thing that's really important in the built environment is that everything is done. So basically from when you leave your house exactly. to when you arrive, it needs to be adapted. If there's one hindrance, the whole thing doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah. How do you adapt to that as a city? Well, the difficult thing, for example, with uh, a guided path for people that are blind, 58% uh, of all the paths in the Netherlands are obstructed. So you walk from your house, you go to a museum, for example, and then the path is obstructed. So. Uh, to look at the broad perspective as a municipality or as a city, that's, I think, the key issue, to make everything accessible and that the people know what is accessible and what's not. Okay. Well, one city really stood out in making the built environment accessible. Here to announce the winner is the president of the European jury, Shadi Abu Zada. I must say it has been an incredible pleasure and honor to serve as the chair of the EU jury. I've had the pleasure of working with a whole group of very insightful judges with very diverse expertise in different areas. We went through many applications that this year came in from all around Europe. Many different cities and countries have applied this year. And this was a real pleasure to look at all these applications and to try to find commonalities between them. Just a reminder that we're not awarding the most accessible cities this would be a very different type of award. What we're really looking for is the holistic approach to accessibility. How the cities address many different aspects given their particular context and backgrounds. Some cities are big, others are smaller. Some have particular geographic contexts and others have very different economical contexts as well. So we consider all these aspects and we try to look at how these cities address the inclusive aspect of accessibility, how they combine many different things, how they address people with disabilities, including older people with age-related impairments, as well as maybe children and the education aspects. So there's really a lot to look at. For example, the built environment, transportation, and also digitization and technologies, how cities use technology to provide accessibility. And this year in particular, we have been looking at the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has impacted us all. So looking at all these different aspects, we really try to look at how cities demonstrate progress on each of these aspects and how they, as a whole, address accessibility and disability. This special mention this year is on built environment. To me, this means that the city that won has shown extraordinary progress in a very particular area in the built environment in ensuring physical access to people with different kinds of disabilities. So without ado, let's take a look I have an envelope here stating the city. So the city with the winner for the built environment, <laughs> the special mention of built environment this year is Florence. Congratulations, Florence. All the best and keep up the good work. Special mention for the built environment, Firenze, Italy. Firenze is without a doubt one of the most popular tourist destinations in Europe with its narrow streets and ancient Renaissance buildings. However, this great culture heritage also creates challenges with regard to accessibility. The massive presence of cultural heritage buildings makes accessibility interventions essential but they are also tough to implement at the same time. To this end, Firenze launched a plan to improve the accessibility of its buildings, public spaces and infrastructure across the city. 
buses and trams, as well as stations in old narrow streets are now accessible, making the historical centre accessible to all and helping persons with disabilities get around easily. All taxis are now able to transport wheelchairs and across the city, parking spaces for persons with disabilities have been built. As a result of this plan, Firenze now has the highest number of parking spaces for persons with disabilities in Italy and renovations were carried out to enhance equal access to 29 public facilities such as schools, sports centres, museums and libraries. On top of this, tours and visits to the main touristic and cultural hotspots are now tailored to include sign language, virtual tours and multi-sensory visits. For its improvement to the built environment, while remaining committed to its historic and cultural heritage, Firenze wins a special mention. Dear Mr. Shadi about Zara, it's a great honour for us to receive this prestigious recognition of the commitment of our municipalities for the disadvantaged citizen and tourist. Florence, being a world heritage city, has always felt the need to grant the accessibility to everybody and to allow the visit of its famous monuments and other kind of facilities. As an ancient city with historical urban configuration, it was not easy to fulfill our wishes for a total accessibility. To accomplish our mission, we have followed an holistic approach to ensure a coordinated policies for a widespread accessibility the one-stop shop is meant to provide information on services to people with disabilities. During the years, we always kept on working on facilitating the access to our museums as, as well as our schools, offices, public transportation, sport facilities, and to include all kinds of minorities in the decision-making process in order to be able to represent everybody's needs and to find the right solution. One important step was taken creating a city council for people with disabilities, as well as a working group for the removal of architectural barriers to suggest interventions and solutions. Lots of efforts were also spent on education and the promotion of an inclusive approach for those who could have different needs, and we must all feel obliged to improve their quality of life, guaranteeing an easy and comfortable access to all services the municipality offers. We also created a mobile application giving real-time information about road paths for wheelchairs and create dedicated painting parking lots for cars of disabled drivers. The pandemic that is hitting our city, as well as the rest of the world, has made our job more challenging. Today, accessibility to public spaces is now limited for everybody due to social distancing. But we have been able to increase the number of services we can provide, and that includes food and services home delivery for fragile and disabled citizens, as well as remote uh, learning and medical assistance. We are very satisfied for what we have done so far, and we are really honored to receive your appreciation. Thank you again for this special mention for Built Environment. Congratulations again, Florence. Uh, we're going to now move to the, the three winners. Uh, Nick, it must be a hell of a job if you're in the jury. To It's comparing apples and oranges. I'm so glad that I'm not in the jury because it was an incredibly hard task. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not in their shoes either. But here to announce, the third place is the Director for Social Affairs of DG Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion, Ms. Ivankovic Knezovic. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Hohir and Nick. What a day. I cannot wait for the Commissioner Dali to announce the winner of the Access City Award 2021. As for me, this is the first time I take part in the Access City Award ceremony. I have to say, I feel honored and privileged as a Director for Social Affairs at DG Employment, Social Policy and Inclusion. Hohier and Nick, I have to say I'm pleased to see you are wearing these transparent masks. It is indeed very important to show them as much as possible as they are very useful. I also had mine ready in case I would have been with someone today. However, 
The rules are quite strict in Brussels and it was better for me to address the audience alone. Believe me, I would have preferred to share the office and actually the screen with my director Gen general, Jos Korte, who you will see a bit later. I take the opportunity to thank my team and our contractor who have been working very hard in the past few months to ensure the smooth organization of the competition and today's ceremony. As mentioned by Commissioner Dali, we are pleased by outcome as 50 cities have indeed applied this year. It is more than last year and more than the year before. Accessibility is important and this shows that everyone is willing to invest more and more in becoming more accessible and inclusive. Congratulations to all participants and to all shortlisted cities. Congratulations to Poznan, Florence and Komotini for their well-deserved awards. Let us start now with the top three of this year's competition. The third place winning city is already a member of the Access City Award Network. Indeed, this city has been rewarded already a special mention a few years ago. It is now rewarded for its strong commitment to accessibility and for its continuous improvements. The third place winner of the Access City Award 2021 is... The city of Gdynia in Poland. Congratulations, Gdynia! Third prize, Gdynia, Poland. Gdynia's location, a port city located on the Baltic Sea and part of the Tri-City together with Gdansk and Sopot and its large industrial areas make accessibility a challenge. However, its commitment to accessibility is evident by its previous Access City Award win and continuous improvements over the years. Gdynia is now more accessible than ever before. Since 1999, Gdynia has consistently been implementing a social policy that considers the needs of all of its residents. Over the years, an Office for Persons with Disabilities has been set up, an accessibility expert appointed and a Council for Children with Disabilities established. Guidelines for the design and development of public spaces were also created, based on the principles of universal design, ensuring accessibility to facilities and spaces for all. All designs are reviewed by the accessibility expert. On top of this, a centre for the rental of equipment such as crutches, wheelchairs and bicycles was opened. A park was also opened which includes gym equipment tailored for older people and persons with disabilities. On public transport, all buses are now equipped with floors that can be lowered. Passenger information boards are now voice activated and a tactile paving system has been installed at the bus stops. For its broad vision, universal design and high level of commitment to accessibility, Gdynia once again wins third prize in Access City Award 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank the jury on behalf of inhabitants of Gdynia for awarding us the third prize in this year's edition of Access City Award. It is the people living in Gdynia who every day create the unique atmosphere of our city, a city of openness and sensitivity to needs of others. This is achieved by means of social campaigns, especially those addressed to children, competition, publications, that aim at rising of social awareness, setting modern standard of preceding everyone as equal partners in all areas of life, so that we can live together, not just next to one another. For many years, we have been creating a city accessible to all, promoting universal design, so that no barriers limit the realization of dreams and life full of joy but most importantly, so that everyone has the right to choose how they want to live. I am very proud that Gdynia is receiving the Access City Award for the third time. The road is not easy, but as the ancient saying goes, 
per aspera ad astra. It is an honor to be included in such a group. Thank you very much. Congratulations again. And here to announce the second place is the Director General of the DG Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion, Mr. Joost Korte. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Goedemiddag ook voor Nick en Rogier. Congratulations to Gdynia for the third place and to all the special mentions. Despite the difficulties we're all going through in 2020, this edition of the Access City Award is a success. It shows the strong commitment of cities across the European Union and this gives us hope for a brighter future. Katharina, I would like to tell you that I would have loved to share my office and screen with you, but as you have pointed out, this is unfortunately not possible. Now, let's hope for a face-to-face -face edition of the Access City Award and of the European Day of Persons with Disabilities next year in 2021. As mentioned during this morning, uh, the opening day of the uh, Persons with Disabilities, accessibility has been a very important topic for the past 10 years. And as was also mentioned by the Commissioner, it will of course remain an important one. Accessibility is absolutely essential to ensure participation in society on an equal basis for everyone. And we spoke a lot about the European Accessibility Act. We should also remember that the Access City Award was created a decade ago and that it's one of our best instruments to raise awareness on accessibility in the European Union and beyond. I heard indeed that several winning cities have been contacted by cities from around the world. And by winning the award, a city becomes a clear example for everyone. This is now the 11th edition and its success shows that it's meant to last. Finally, now I have the honor to announce you which city is the winner of the second place of the Access City Award 2021. You can now open the envelope. The second place winner of the Access City Award 2021 is a city which has a comprehensive approach and which addresses all kinds of accessibility issues. For instance, it has worked a lot to make its website accessible by providing easy to read and read aloud functions. Another example is that the main public passenger ships are accessible for wheelchair users. You now have a hint. This city has a port. The second place winning city of the Access City Award 2021 is Bremerhaven in Germany. Second prize, Bremerhaven, Germany. Bremerhaven is one of the largest cities in Germany that is located on the North Sea coast. Its port, beach and unique touristic attractions such as historic ships present accessibility challenges for the city. However, the city's dedication and commitment has led to the creation of a comprehensive approach that addresses all kinds of accessibility issues. The city's Harbour Worlds project has created barrier-free solutions to areas such as outdoor markets, green spaces, the port and the beach. Cobblestones were sanded down to create a flat surface suitable for wheelchair users, people with walkers, prams and bicycles and ramps added where possible. When it comes to public transport, 70% of bus stops in the city offer tactile guidance systems and the main public passenger ships are now accessible for wheelchairs and other mobility devices. Bremerhaven has also ensured that all online information on its website is available in easy to read language and that there are videos with sign language and a read aloud function where possible. The city's disability ombudsman has also become a permanent contact for all matters relating to accessibility and provides advice on issues relating to participation, rehabilitation and inclusion. He also advises on how to make buildings barrier-free. For its progress across a wide spectrum of city life and its comprehensive approach towards accessibility, Bremerhaven wins the second prize in Access City Awards 2021. We have in Bremerhaven a motto. Eine Stadt für alle. Das gilt natürlich insbesondere auch für Menschen mit Behinderung. Deswegen haben wir uns natürlich auch aufgemacht, auch für unsere Gäste, 
die ein Handicap haben oder eine Behinderung haben, so bestmöglich in Bremerhaven zu betreuen und zu begleiten, wie das möglich ist. Wir haben uns also aufgemacht, einen behindertengerechten Tourismus zu organisieren. Alle haben mitgemacht. Unsere Attraktionen, der öffentliche Personennahverkehr, die Hotels, die Restaurants und viele mehr. Wir sind stolz darauf, dass wir jetzt dafür diesen Preis bekommen haben. Das zeigt, dass wir uns für einen barrierefreien Tourismus, eine Stadt für alle, auf dem richtigen Wege befinden. Wir werden weitermachen. Danke für diesen tollen Preis. Okay, wow, Bremerhaven, again, congratulations. Nick, it's time to announce the winner. Are you impressed with what you've seen so far? I'm absolutely impressed with everything that I've seen so far. And it's my biggest dream in a couple of years to go on holiday with my three little kids and my wife. And I don't have to think about where we go anymore because everything is accessible in Europe. Will there be a time when this award is no longer needed? When, in when inclusion is so obvious, we don't even have to award it? Let's hope so. I think it's always going to be a topic. I mean, technology is going to help us a bit further for the coming years, but it's always going to be a topic for the next 10, 20 years. But as long as we have attention for it, as long as we're paying detail to it, we're, we're going to be there. Okay, well, let's see who is this year's winner of the number one award. Here to announce it is once again the European Commissioner for Equality, Ms. Dali. Good afternoon again. We are now back in the Berlemont building and I am very pleased to announce the name of the winning city of this Access City Award 2021, even though this may no longer be a surprise for you. But before officially announcing the winning city and the reasons why it has been distinguished, I congratulate Bremerhaven, Florence, Gdynia and Komotini, and you are all leading by example, and you are now members of the Access City Award Network. I hope to see you as proactive as the previous winners. The network is a good way for you to put forward your ideas and projects on accessibility. This way you can work together towards becoming an always more inclusive city. Now I think you've all guessed the name in this envelope. It is with great pleasure that I announce Yon Shopping as winner of the Access City Award 2021. Access City Award 2021 winner. Jon Shopping, Sweden. Situated on the shore of a lake, Jon Shopping's geographical location make it a beautiful place to live. However, its picturesque terrain and location have made accessibility a challenge. Despite this, Jon Shopping has shown great dedication to its growing city and has prioritized accessibility for all in both new and old areas of the city. Thanks to its continuous effort and collaboration with various disability organizations to improve the accessibility of public buildings and infrastructures, Yon Shopping has seen positive results. Cultural buildings such as the library and concert hall now include tactile maps and signage, audio description, easy to read facilities and wheelchair access. 120 public playgrounds have been renovated to improve accessibility, with two of the largest playgrounds now fully accessible. When it comes to constructing new buildings, Yon Shopping consults its citizens through dialogues to make sure their accessibility needs are being met. Key players, such as disability organisations, are involved from the beginning of a project. They are involved in the decision-making process. Yon Shopping therefore ensures that all groups in society are catered for and made aware of the accessibility issues that others face. This all-encompassing approach has even encouraged the creation of a local Access City Award, which is awarded to a business or organisation that has worked with its customers to improve access for them. For its inclusive and universal bottom-up approach to accessibility, Yon Shopping wins first prize in the Access City Award 2021. Congratulations! Som representant for Jönköpings kommun är det en ära att få motta utmärkelsen Access City Award 2021. Vi är så stolta och glada över att få denna utmärkelse. Under många år har vi haft ett samarbete med pensionärs- och funktionsrättsorganisationer för att skapa ett tillgängligt samhälle för alla. Det är ett samarbete som har utvecklats och där representanter för de olika organisationerna 
deltar i arbetsgrupper tillsammans med tjänstepersoner i vår samhällsplanering. Vi har lärt oss hur viktigt det är att ha dialog i tidigt skede när vi planerar och bygger vår stad. Jönköping är en stad som växer och det vill vi göra på ett hållbart och jämlikt sätt. Vi tackar också för prispengarna som kommer att användas för att fortsätta att bygga en inkluderande stad. On behalf of Jönköpings Disability Rights Federation, I feel very honored and privileged to be a part receiving this award. This is a highly valued acknowledgement that our ways of working has been successful and show that we are on the right track. We also hope that we can serve as an inspiration for other cities to use this method in their work for diversity and inclusion. The key success factor in our work is that it originates from persons with first-hand experience from their own functional abilities. In close cooperation with the city representatives of Jönköping, we have been able to design and implement inclusive environment. For example, accessible sidewalks, pedestrian crossings and the right mindset. The important topic needs constant focus and there is still room for improvement also in our city. And this award will serve as a, a moral booster for our continuous efforts. Thank you. Well, once again, congratulations. Nick, we've come to an end. It's been yeah. an amazing ride. How was it for you? It was a privilege to, to host this event. And uh, I'm more than happy that there's so much attention for this subject as well. Well, I, I feel privileged as well. Congrats to all the winners. Thanks to the commissioner and all the participants. Yeah, and of course, follow the award on social media. Comment the event on YouTube and Facebook. Let us know what you think about it. And of course, share the info about this prize with your municipality and encourage them to apply for the next edition. Maybe it's even going to be my city of Rotterdam. Gratis, Jono Shopping. Congratulations to all the winning cities in the Access City Award 2021. Thank you for participating and for your dedication to accessibility. Thank you also to all the applicants. I count on all of you to continue to be leading examples and invest in accessibility. There is a long road ahead to reach our union of equality, but I am convinced that together we can achieve our goals. Thank you to all national and EU jurors for your dedication and for the good work you have done. I also thank colleagues in the Directorate General for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion and our contractors for organizing the competition and the ceremony. And I thank you again, Rogier and Nick. Without a doubt, I look forward to meeting you all in person in Brussels for next year's award ceremony.